Welcome to our House of One talk and prayer. Today we have a guest from Haifa, Israel, and we want to happy to be uh, have you here, uh, Olam Ben Korin. Welcome. Our topic today is the different views from the religions to the theme garden and to the creation of God. At first, uh, I want to talk a little bit the Christian view of gardens, and then we hear from the Islamic view and then from the Jewish view. And we hear from Golan and Korean from their project house, not house, garden, garden of one in Haifa. The Christian view of the garden theme cannot be separated from the Jewish view. In Christianity, the image of the garden combines with the story of paradise, the Garden of Eden. There are two ambivalent aspects associated with the story of paradise. On the one hand, God gives people with his creation everything we humans need to live. Everything is free and sufficient and available without effort. God gave Adam and Eve a heavenly life. That is the first part of the story. But people were driven out of the paradise. They didn't trust God. They wanted more than they had. The paradise was lost. Since then, we humans have had to work for our lives. God's rich creation is available to us for this. We have to be careful with creation, care for it and preserve it. A Christian garden is therefore a garden that is laid out in harmony with nature, with God's creation. A garden that feeds us humans and that is cultivated sustainably. A garden shaped by the belief that all animals and plants are living things that God created. Everything has to be treated respectfully. A beautiful Lush garden keeps our memories of the lost paradise alive and our hope for heavenly conditions in God's kingdom, in the future of heaven. Our belief in God as the creator of everything alive obliges us to treat nature with care and sustainability. What do you think, Osman? So, yeah. The garden, the idea of the garden within the Islamic perspective actually cannot be separated whether from the Jewish nor the Christian uh, idea or concept, I would say. Um, the garden in the, in the Quran, of course, is connected with, uh, directly with the idea of the paradise um, and it is described in different enriching words, of course, but uh, in, in the description of the garden, for instance, as we find it in the Surah Ar-Rahman, uh, it says, but for, who, but for him who fears the standing before his Lord are two gardens of spreading branches, wherein are two fountains flowing, wherein is every kind of fruit in pairs, and so on. And then and later on it says, and beside them are two other gardens, dark green with foliage, wherein are two abundant springs, wherein is fruit, the date palm, and pomegranate. So it is a very um, lively, garden full of fruits and with flowing water, of course. Um, and the, the, as, it as it was mentioned, there are four gardens mentioned in, the, in this part of the Quran. And interestingly, uh, this idea of the four gardens uh, was also taken by, um, within the Islamic history and in the Persian culture, actually, 
and where the gardens were created uh, in this concept. So there's the gardens are uh, mostly four parts and in the center of the four gardens they are connected by um, a spring, a water spring. But um, the idea and the concept or creation of the garden within the Islamic history is quite different. We speak of an Abbasid garden or uh, Umayyad garden or later on within the um, Andalusian garden, etc., etc. The garden is, as Javad Karahsan so beautifully says, it is, um, it reminds us or connects us uh, the earth with paradise and it assures us that paradise is actually possible yeah so the garden here in this world is kind of a reflection of the garden which is possible in the hereafter the paradise so it is a place of hope a place of rest of course um, a place of tranquility the gardens we have here and water is also very an essence of course within the garden water is the essence of life and as we know even the sharia uh, means a kind of a path to the water source so um, and from this uh, of course we can we can think about what is so important in, in our daily lives uh, or the message which we can derive from our holy scripture is that of course the creation of god with the garden with all the animals and and fruits is something we as mankind have to protect and we have a responsibility to and um, that is we always have to be aware and um, yeah that would be maybe a short briefly uh, introduction of the idea from an islamic perspective wonderful thank you so much it's a pleasure to be here to be with you all uh already enriching to hear the various perspectives and i'm going to add that um in in the jewish worlds there are many understandings of uh these verses describing uh, the Garden of Eden. And um, I, I would like to say, first of all, that it is in common for all of us that the Garden is the place in which humanity first appears in the world. And I think that's something that we all have in common. Um, I think that in um, the Torah, in the Jewish uh, text of the Bible, we also have uh, two different creation stories, one with the garden and one without. So already there, there are multiple perspectives on uh, this notion of human experience and how it stems in one place from the garden. Um, garden, of course, leads us to the, the water, and in Judaism we have a connection between water and Torah, water and the teaching. They are seen as one and the same. Life cannot exist physically without the water and spiritually without guidance and without words of inspiration and uh, words of our covenant, words of connection with God. So the water that feeds the garden and in that point where humanity uh, starts to flourish. Uh, but I want to um, reflect on one of the commentators, uh, um, the great Maimonides of the 12th century, who sees the story of the Garden of Eden as the movement of humanity from the world of the ideal to the world of the real. When humanity, when Adam, the human being, was first in the garden, he was in, or he or she both together, were in this world of the ideal. But after having um, the taste of the, the forbidden fruit, um, the humans move from that state of idealism to realism. That's when they shift, and so he explains in the Guide for the Perplexed, that the movement is into the world of the real. And in this real world, we have a lot of work to do, uh, and that is part of our responsibility. Um, and in this garden, we are told in uh, the book of Genesis, in uh, chapter 2, 
verse 15, that God commands us to cultivate and to preserve the garden. So to cultivate is to innovate, to change. To preserve is to maintain tradition. And so already in our story, already in the Torah, we are told of the tension of life to sustain tradition, yet to innovate and create and move forward, just like we have to do in the garden. We have to make sure that its life is preserved, but if we don't take care of its evolution, the garden will at the end they just die and stay stagnant. And that's what our life is all about. And this is why for me in Haifa, when I uh, take the notion of the house of one, which I understand to mean there's a lobby in which all humanity come together so we can celebrate what we have in common, but yet there is an exit to a mosque, a church, and a synagogue. Each one has their differences. We are not afraid of our differences, but we are enriched by the variety in our garden, yet there is a place where we all can meet. And in a garden, compared to a building, the walls are taken down, figuratively and literally. There are no walls. And that is why for me in Haifa and in Israel, in this place where it is the holy land, it's the land where there has been so much promise, yet so much pain, where there is so much hope and vision of a messianic future, of a time when the world will be uh, set correct and set right, yet today there's so much strife. We need to bring down the walls. We need to create a garden. And this is the, the vision that we have to do here in Haifa, to create a garden in which there will be sacred spaces for each one of the five traditions and faith communities that are present in Haifa. The Druze, the Baha'i, the Muslims, the Christians, and the Jews. And we will envision this garden in which people who come and visit are inspired by sacred outdoor chapels of each one of the faith traditions and also come together in a space where all humanity can come together as one. And this is what we have in the future, the vision of what we would like to create here in Israel. So from the Garden of Eden all the way through to the Garden of One, there is so much cultivation, innovation, and so much tradition, so much that we have to preserve from the past in order to make a better future. Thank you, Golan, for this enlightening words and for the vision of a garden which will uh, have uh, space and room for different traditions uh, and for different uh, ways of faith. I'd like to add a few words about uh, Jewish gardens in the diaspora, which primarily did not exist. We uh, had here in Berlin a couple of years ago uh, a committee that was uh, finding a concept in the gardens of the world, that's a big garden here in Berlin, for a Jewish garden. And we had to see that there is no concept of a Jewish garden in the last 1500, 1700 years in, in Europe. So we had to invent something new and we came back to the um, to the book of Zohar, of, to the Kabbalistic book, which says that the Sukkah uh, for our uh, festival of Sukkot is a picture of the Gan Eden, of the uh, 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 garden of the uh, Bible. And um, this, I think, is a, is a nice idea. It's a nice idea uh, which we uh, have uh, this uh, the sukkah, this temporarily building, this hut, which is existing only for a couple of days, for a week, and then it's, it's always taken down again. And uh, we, we feel sitting in that sukkah how strong the winds are in Europe, especially it's cold. And we cannot sleep in it, but we can try to have a meal in it. and. Uh, we find uh, our neighbors, the views of our neighbors, and we find that uh, all people belong together as they were 
probably in the Gan Eden in the biblical garden. So I would like to start uh, the session of our uh, prayers with a, a prayer for the Sukkab, which says, which is, is Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddushan Mitzvotav V'Tzivanu Ve'yoshef Ba'Sukkah. Blessed are you, O Lord, O God, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with commandments has commanded us to dwell within the Sukkah. Amen. O oh God, as you say in your holy book in the Surah An Nur, do you not see that all beings in the heavens and on earth praise God? So the birds, so the birds that spread their wings in flight, every being knows how to do his prayer and prays. God knows exactly what they are doing. And so, as your whole creation praises you in, in, in its own way, we also praise you, O oh God. May you accept also the worships we do, and may you give us understanding the appraisal and value of your creation. O oh Lord, give us insight of the beauty you created and give us strength to change our main mankind for a better. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak tiyad al jalali wa ikram O Allah, you are the perfect peace and peace comes from you. Blessed are you, O owner of majesty and honor Give us peace. Amen. I would like to uh, share with you a prayer based uh, on longer prayer written by uh, Rabbi Jack Reamer. We cannot merely pray to you, O God, to root out prejudice, for you have already given us eyes with which to see the good in others if we would only use them rightly. We cannot merely pray to you, O God, to end disease, for you have already given us great minds with which to search out cures and healings, if we could only use them constructively. Therefore, we pray to you instead, O God, for strength, determination, and willpower to do instead of just to pray, to become instead of merely to wish. Elna refana la. God, please heal the world in which we live. Baruch Ata Adonai, Shomea Tfila. Blessed are you, Adonai, who can empower through the act of prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator of the universe, there is no God but you. God, our father and mother, for your creation and with your creation, we praise you. You have created everything out of love and are now growing over the world. We come to you with the confidence asking for forgiveness for harming each other and your creation. Forgive us the wrong we do to your creation. Forgive us for the exploitation of nature, for the violence we do to each other. We feel awe and gratitude for your everlasting love, for your great, colorful, and rich creation, and for each and every one of your children, Christians, Jewish, Muslims, as well as Thu, who have a different belief. Give us and Thu, who are responsible, mutual respect in word and deed. Give us the will to preserve creation to bring about peace and justice for all. Eternal God, creator of the universe, there is no God but you. God bless you and us now and forever. Amen.